All right, welcome in everybody. We have some exciting games today here at the S2 tournaments. We have Silence versus Claim, and obviously, as we can see right now, we have the Nurse on Bad Preham School. And I'm excited for today's matchups. And as always, I have my co-caster Sick Dragon with us. And I know you love your Nurse sets and stuff like this. So, what are you expecting here from Silence and Claim? These are both well-established teams, by the way. I do indeed love my Nurse crowds. <laughs> so, uh, I'm very excited. Uh, bad in preschool is always a very interesting uh, choice for nurse. There's so many line of sight breakers, so I expect our survivors to take great advantage of that, especially in the school. Uh, we do find our Ada pretty much off the bat and get a nice first hit. Yeah, that was a pretty quick uh, hit right there, so not too bad at all, really. Hold on, just take a pass. I got one energy something real quick. Okay, no problem. Ada goes uh, edge map trying to use the rocks. One of the better places you can go against Nurse to go in edge map. It does get hit, and this is going to be our first hook. Now, I see our, sir, our killer brought agitation to get to her pain res hooks easier because this is a very big map, and you never know with pain res uh, hook placement. Let's see. And we do indeed uh, get a pain res off there. And I was looking around. It's a pretty good 3 gen over there by uh, Shaq's side. Like down here, there's nobody there. We go back to hook. Trying to see if there's somebody coming in looking for the unhook. Maybe our deliverance player. I'm not sure what perks our Ada on hook has. Yeah, let's go check real quick. Sorry about that. I was trying to respond inside of a team thing. They uh, had to just say something. So we see the deliverance player, Daz, here getting ready to sneak up and try to get the unhook. But definitely does need to be careful knowing that if the nurse does find him and gets a quick tag... You don't, yes, it's okay to trade with Deliverance because you still get value out of it, but it's better when you don't have to do a trade and you're able to get the unhook and make distance and waste more time because then it comes in more valuable, you know what I mean? And you have the risk too of the killer going for the unhook player and they getting down before the uh, deliver uh, the safe unhook comes in and it doesn't give you no Deliverance. And, and right now he needs to be careful, he has to hurry up. And he does get the unhook here. You have to be very careful because you can go down pretty quick with a nurse killer like this. It's very easy to get survivors down after, you know, hitting them, especially with an M1 as a nurse. Absolutely. And it does look like he is going to get uh, his deliverance up. Our nurse look like they might go after these for a moment, but decides to come back and look for a second hook on Ada. We do see our first two generators pop. Yeah, that's very good. Two back to back, too, as well. Nurse still doing pretty decent here. Does have a lot to work with. Just needs to get the second hook down on Ada very quickly and, you know, get that timer started for that death hook and make it a 1v3 with a 3 gen situation, which is where you want to be and it's ideal for these matchups here. And we can see the Ace working on a gen 2 as well, too, where Noddle hanging around maybe by the hook. Maybe be the one that goes for the unhook, but we do know that Ace did get the unhook and still has deliverance, so that could come in play in the very end, and I accidentally did the spectator bug. I did not mean to. <laughs> not the nurse face cap and spectator bug. But yeah, we see our Ace also has not gotten reset, so if the nurse does find him at some point before that happens, it's going to be a pretty quick down. All right. We should fix the spectator bug. Oh, wait, for the people, our Ada, so that the tunnel out will be harder and take more time for our nurse. Very good play. Yeah, the amount of times that you see far people coming in clutch here is it's honestly second to none. Like, that, that perk is very valuable. And the newer people, it doesn't seem like it's a good perk. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're picking somebody up, but then you're getting injured and you can't get yourself reset. But in situations where, you know, you got to stop the tunnel out and stuff like that, it's really good. And now the Ada doesn't get tunneled out, and now we're hooking the Deliverance player. And unfortunately for the killer here, that's going to be all time wasted as the survivors are just going to stick on generators and not worry about going for the unhook here. Yeah, this puts no pressure on our survivors because they can just sit on gens. They do not have to worry about unhooking them. Uh, we do hear a lot of progress up in this gen in the, single, in the house right here. But does not go up there to use Pop Goes the Weasel and our ace uses Deliverance. Very nice so far from both teams so far. Give me one, one second. No problem. Uh, our ace got pretty far here after, after unhooking himself. Wow, look at that. The Iris made it pretty much all the way to the school, so that our nurse is going to turn back because the school is not really a place that you want to face if you can avoid it, as there's so many line of sight blockers. If the <laughs> I know a lot of
of people question why we used uh, the Bad Hand Preschool, but we wanted to mix it up a little bit. We're having a different map that is not known to be used in comp like that, as well with a, such a strong killer. When we bring in those smaller maps that are really, like, for instance, you bring in a map that, that comp teams are really well established with, they know how to, you know, use it very well. So, like, they have good strategies, but when you mix it up with maps like this, you know, people don't usually practice this kind of map style, so the callouts are going to be a little bit different, and the, the layout's going to be a little bit different, and the gameplay is going to be a little bit different. And with the nurse, she's such a strong killer that, yes, she does, it is a big map, but it, it's a it's a good killer, you know, the best in the game. So, three hit states still, so far, doing very good here on the survivor side. You know, um, I, right now, Silence is trying to put as much pressure as they can in here. They still have two stacks of pain res left with agitation in play too as well. So we could see her moving around, you know, and trying to get those uh, pain, pain res left as well too. We do have a uh, pop goes weasel in the pocket for when our pain res is run out. Is our nurse is looking edge map now to see who ran off that way. It does not quite find them, but, but our nurse is a very good setup near Shaq. It's, it's just very good three gen over there, and all of the gens are concentrated on this side of the map. So, Bob and Pain Res is going to come in handy for, for sure. Do we... Okay. we do not quite get the tag onto the A's, and the A's are going to take the chase to the school. Does our nurse follow? Ooh, no, our nurse spots somebody behind, uh, behind the fences there. Yeah, very nice find. That's really good, too. You got to keep the pressure up with the nurse, you know, and you got to remember, you got to keep her eyesight, you know. One thing about people that don't, like, they, I mean, they know, they do realize it, but... You need to have sight of the uh, the survivors because you're so slow that if you don't know where to blink, right, they can they can slowly but surely run away from you, especially in areas where you line a sight blocker is blocked. Because like you're not gonna blink blindly. That's that's not a smart decision because if you don't guess correctly, guess what happens? You lose. They lose so much distance between the survivor. So. You know, in these situations, you just gotta be able to W key and go get to the right areas. And as we see, she skipped that hook there, so we know exactly where she's going. Gonna go for that edge. I mean, that uh, pain res here. And we see that survivors are definitely working on gens. Gaz is definitely back, getting ready for another on hook here. As well as we have Renato in the distance, pretty far away from where they're at, already working on a generator. Slowly but surely walking away, making sure that no uh, uh, scratch marks are being seen by the killer, so that they do not get caught. And we see a fast on hook here. Let's see how the, the nurse responds here for this one. Ah. Going for looking at the sable again, deciding to pop this gen first. And agitation also helped our nurse to be able to bring that hook closer to the generators. But, ooh, that's a perfect blink out of that gen, unfortunately. There's nobody on it right now. Let's see if we can find where that person snuck off to. Alrighty, yes. I'm actually quite excited to see how the rest of this game is going to play out right now. It's been slow a little bit on both sides. Not too, too much is going on. We still have three generators left. But I would assume that we are going to get very close to seeing our first um, and, uh, other generators pop in here. And so the nurses thinking to themselves, they got to get some more downs. And they got to get some more pressure and get some more hooks. And make it a little bit easier for their uh, survivors in the next, like, you know, for the wing con here. Absolutely. We've seen a lot of gener uh, of generators being thrust in this back area. I would not be surprised if we see one uh, pop soon. Oh, and our Ada is dead. Then we are in a 3v1 with three generators left against Nurse with a very good setup. With her generators here in the back of the map. Oh, perfect blink on to Sable. We get the tag there. Oh, and Sable's just out in the open. She's going to go down. Not much you can do there against the Nurse. No, unfortunately, there's not. That's what makes her such a dangerous killer in these sets, is that, like, you just cannot really do too much, even if you do have line of sight breakers, even if you do have something to work with, as long as you make the right blink, there's nothing survivors can do. Absolutely. Oh, and she does manage to interrupt this generator before it pops, and probably going to use Pop Goes the Weasel on it. That is max value from Pop Goes the Weasel on that generator. Uh, that was so close to being completed. A lot of times, like, one generator can make a huge difference in these tournaments in terms of the win condition. At least we see the unhill cam in on Sable. Yeah, yeah, our survivors are trying to take the chases as far from the generators as they can and leave, lead the nurse away from there so that their teammates have time. They need to pop generators out, get a reset. And as That's we nice see here, see. another quick down. Sorry, my, my mic wasn't working in Discord. I was talking, <laughs> and I heard you talk over I me, and I'm like, Dragon, how dare you? <laughs> I uh, that was so funny. I, just, I, I think stream heard me, but other than that, though, oh, very good performance so far. 
we see that ge another generator pop, and it took him a while ah! to get that third generator pop. It really did. It did, yeah. Oh, sorry, stream, if I was talking over, uh, but I could not hear them, so I assumed that your mic passed out. <laughs> yeah, we're Whoops. good, though. But, yeah, we do, we do get a third generator pop, which is great. Yeah. Very helpful in this uh, situation. Did we... Did I miss up for the people? Why is it not all broken? It could be uh the, the Steve perk, if I'm not mistaken. Well, oh, blood rot. You don't really see that used often. Like I'm talking about the one like where you like you heal your, you heal and then you yeah. get on her. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, when you're death hook, uh, if you're healthy, you can get your That's... exhaustion back. And oh, you I thought that was but you broken for twenty seconds. I don't know. I, I've, I've got myself confused, honestly. But, <laughs> but still, back to what we were doing here. Yes. The survivors yes. did get the reset on Lulu, uh, Lulu here. Or Lulu, I can't say that name correctly, my bad. But right now, it's this is a very uh, pivotal moment in the game. They need to play correctly because with a 1v3 with two generators left, the decent gin spread, yes, but still, it can go any way here, and Pippa knows that. So they're trying their best to find out where the survivors are and get that quick early tag and put the pressure back on the survivors as they are fully reset and can now slowly and surely start creeping towards those generators and make progression happen underneath their nose. Definitely, our survivors are probably going to want to play uh, slowly here. Uh, nurse notices they have finally stopped the aggression on the generator by shock. And I believe that was Renato who got that one? Or was it Ace? We find Ace uh, stealth, trying to stealth edge map here and gets a quick tag on him. Very nice tag too as well. We're here at Shaq. Uh, maybe makes it enough distance. No, it doesn't. The double back actually didn't work for him this time. It looked like it was going to make uh, the, the difference and be able to get the nurse to swing. Uh, you know, and I got, oh, well, I mean, not make distance, sorry. But unfortunately, the nurse got sucked up by that telephone pole and wasn't able to blink fully and was able to get that hit. So I'm lucky for Jazz here. Let's see what the other survivors are doing. We see Sable. Not too far, I don't think so. But we see another survivor that's also on a generator. Wait, I thought we did. Maybe Renato was, but it was on a slow, uh, the other one from far away. Pop doing a lot of damage now to any of the progressions that they've already had on these gens. Oh, absolutely. Pop can completely eat away at generators that you always have done if you get fast hooks and downs, which Nurse is absolutely capable of. <laughs> And scratch marks over here. I mean, survivors are doing a really well job of not letting the nurse get too much pressure on them and separating themselves from each other to where even if the nurse does get a quick tag and a down, that the survivors are nowhere really around each other to where she can't, you know, use that momentum and, and shift over and get another free hit. So, you know, very well as well. Time. Number one thing you want on Nurse other than line of sight blockers is distance. Yes, distance for sure. 100%. She is a very slow killer and she has to rely on her blinks to make distance too. So like if you get a lot of distance from her and able to like, you know, separate it, it makes it to where she's going to not be able to blink fully. Very nice dead hard from Sable here. Oh my goodness, this is huge. Especially in a situation like this where they need to get pressure on the generators. And if I'm not mistaken, let's see. No, they are getting the reset right now. Maybe they have some generator pressure coming to push the door, which you have to obviously in this, in this uh, area right here, because if not, you won't be able to hook them. Yeah. Hmm. Smart and well played by our Sable here. That that dead hard bought extra time and was able to uh, allow Sable to get downstairs in the school to get down. Our nurse had to go break the door. That is a lot of extra time bought. And we see our second kill of the matchup. Now it is a 1v2. This is a very dangerous situation for the survivors to be in because this is where the killers always tunnel and slug and you know I wouldn't even say tunnels just slug because there's there's only two people right. left you know what's the point of right. you know not le doing it to get the secure right here and there's still two generators up it's not the worst right for the survivors but it's not the best though yeah I think this is really gonna depend on their generator progress if they have one that is high progress that we haven't checked yet one of these two that will be our, our best scenario for our survivors here otherwise this might be a 4k2 yeah, if I'm the survivors, I'm going to try my best to put work on a generator, but it's going to be hard because all these generators are not fully, like, you know, not even halfway done. 
so the nurse is going to be easily able to go to each gen and harass it. And Daz does unfortunately get caught here. We are at Shaq. He doesn't have much to work with though as the killer already double blinks and gets another down. Now it is a cat and mouse gameplay. All Pippa has to do now is just find the Renato and it is going to be a GG's here and it'll be a 4K at two generators. I'm now looking around uh, where they know that Renato has been doing the generator last. Trying to see if we can sniff the, our survivor out. It's just a matter of time. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of time. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely just a matter of time at this point uh, to find him. It's a big map, though. <laughs> and we've seen before Renato when he got off of that generator head kind of in the direction of the school. So he might be very, very far away. But it is indeed just a matter of time before uh, our nurse finds or not to. And since uh, Hatch is at Shaq, our nurse knows where it's going to spawn. So even if uh, our survivor gets close to bleeding out and chooses to look, they're gonna, she's going to be able to close Hatch. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you got to think too. I mean, the survivors did three generators. The nurse does have pain breath and pop goes to weasel. You know what I'm saying? That's two uh, gin perks that are really good at slowing down, and they still were able to secure three uh, gins, which is very good. It's very doable for their killer to be able to come back and get the same result, if not better, but it's still not going to be easy here, especially because it's a 4K at two generators. They're going to have to pop four generators to be able to make it happen. It's definitely doable when caught with, with a killer like Nurse, but it is also definitely not an easy one. Oh, we're trying to look edge map by the school now. See if we can find where that Renato snuck off to. Yeah, and with the big map nice. like this, man, it's not gonna happen easily. No. Now there's so many different places that uh, I could be. You had the right idea looking at the back of the school, but we we're at the wrong corner. Ah, uh, yeah. Pink Pippa's gonna have to eventually just go for the pickup and get the hook, and then maybe. I don't know. I think I think if I'm not mistaken, survivors actually wait. Did we just see a pickup oh, here? A breakable. Breakable. That was our deliverance player. Oh, they also had he also had unbreakable. Well, that's very interesting. Forcing the uh, pickup out of the locker. Yeah, the nurse is the nurse is not full for it and does not uh, does not hook him. This is an interesting play though. They would just use the unbreakable just oh because, just to play around, you know what I'm saying? Like, they knew they couldn't do nothing with it. But, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, at that point, you might as well. <laughs> this is just a waiting game. This is nothing but a waiting game at this point. Might as well pop your unbreakable. Get some value out of your perks, you know? Right, right, right. Not, yeah, you can't get mad about somebody getting some value out of their perks, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, look, doing a little nurse tech, ah. you know, looking in those lockers, trying to see if there's anybody in there. I remember the first time that I saw somebody doing that, and I couldn't believe to myself that I never knew about that. This was a while back, though, of course, but still, it's like, you know, they, these these comp players, they come up with so many strategies and so many techs and, and stuff that most people don't know about. And you know what I'm saying? And it's amazing to see it be used in this high of a level, too. Yeah, I remember the first time that I saw a nurse player look into the locker to see if there was a survivor there. I was like, I was the same. How did I not know this? <laughs> I was, I was shocked. I was shocked. And let me tell you something. I, I used it now. Oh, we get the actual pickup. Are we going for um the trauma tech here? I don't know. This could be really risky, especially if Renato gets caught. But they have to do something here. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, this game's gonna just be stretched out until somebody dies and they go for hatch. And if I'm not mistaken, the team accidentally brung a wrong offering and brung ha Hatch to main instead of Shaq. And if that's the case here, and they do get sh and Shaq, oh. um, Hatch doesn't spawn at Shaq, they will they will not get they will get zero points for their escape on the Hatch play because of that, and and also a minus two as well too. So I hope it doesn't come down to that because that would suck, and I know the Survivor team is not gonna like that. But you do have to bring the right offerings and stuff. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't catch it in the very beginning of the game, or we would have forced the restart here. With the minus, right. but um, so we're already well into the game. So if this does happen, the survivors are unfortunately gonna get, uh, be penalized for that in uh, two different ways. So. Oh man. 
<laughs> yeah, that hurts. I, I, this, I think they were indeed going for uh, the drama tech there. Of having, picking up the uh, person who's about to bleed out last second and having them get caught so that the other one can get hash, but and the wrong yeah. offering is going to really hurt them here. Yeah, and the fact is that Rado's over here hanging out exactly where the, the, the hatch is supposed to spawn at main, so I really hope he doesn't take it because if not, that's not going to count. There's going to be a 4k at two generators. Mm. But either way, still an amazing result here, but we'll see in just a second. Oh! Hey, guess what? It doesn't matter. The nurse still finds it. <laughs> I mean, hey, it, it's still... Yeah, so it doesn't matter, but it, it's still, regardless if the nurse got it or not, it would have been the same result. But the survivor team, I mean, the killer team was able to catch it and saw that they brought hatch to main, so they were able to recounter that. But this team also knew that they brought it to, to uh, main, so that's kind of interesting knowing that that's the wrong offering to bring to the map. But it is what it is. It happens sometimes. Yeah, sometimes mistakes happen. Yeah, yeah, but but they definitely uh, knew that they did that too, because like if, if he wasn't chilling at main, right, that would right. be different. I'd be like, oh well, they probably just uh, honest mistake, you know. But no, him chilling at main, he they definitely meant to bring that uh, per, um that uh, offering. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. So. Uh, but we're gonna see how uh, claims gonna do on the killer side here. They're gonna have to make up a, the, either the same result or a better one to be able to either win this set or tie, or unfortunately they will lose the first set as we're going into the second one. It's gonna be quite interesting to play because like I said, you, you see it all the time. When killers, when teams don't, then they don't play killer first, right? They, they Their build is based off of what kind of win con they need to get. So we're probably gonna see maybe some no ed, right? Or maybe, you know, a different perk that's gonna deal with getting somebody, you know, slugged out of the game or whatever. Oh, nice block here from Renato. Yeah, it's a very good job by the Renato avoiding that flank. I don't know about no end on nurse, but it's definitely no, I mean, going to be no I'm so sorry. I, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm thinking of overall oh, general. I'm glad that you called that. Yeah, because you can't get no value out of that unless you're in one. Yeah. So literally every time oh. but nurse chat, my bad. <laughs> I didn't even catch myself oh, saying also, that. We also need, uh... The, the, our next nurse player needs to stop four generators from popping. And, yeah, what I was thinking So was we rancor. might see something like ruin. Yeah, that rank is what I was thinking, yeah. Rank, yeah, yeah, okay. Because even if you don't get the hit, right, you still get the, you can still more, more of them on the ground. Right. Well, all right, everybody, we're exactly. going to get set like, up with the next game. Like I said, it is a 4K at uh, two generators left. Um, survivors did a decently good job, and the killer was able to take that, that, you know, that 4K home. So we will be getting set up with the next match, and we will be back with you guys very soon. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys follow the Twitch stream, exclamation point YT in the stream. And we appreciate everybody, and here's the builds for the game. All right, guys, we are back with the second game of the first set. We have Trinity killing here for Team Claim going against Silence Survivors. And we saw in that first matchup, we saw a 4K coming in at two generators, which is a pretty good performance overall, but it can't be outdone here. And so we're going to see if Trinity is going to be able to do that. And we see an interesting perk here, one that can come in very clutch, especially with uh, the Thirst. And that's going to be Floods of Rage. This could be very dire. And if the Survivors don't recognize that it's coming into play, and we get into a situation like we did last game, where we're playing cat and mouse, whatever. Uh, with the onhook and getting that all that in seconds of, you know, aura reading can be the biggest difference. Seeing where survivors are on generators and what's being pressured and what survivors are up to can be a big difference in this matchup. And we already see our first hit coming in on the uh, ace here. He's gonna have to be very careful and try to make this last a little bit longer, as this will be a pretty good down at the beginning of this match. Almost missed that. But I'm here with my co-caster, Sick Dragon, and Dragon coming in with this setup here. We, you know, we're in the second game of the first set. We've already seen, you know, Silence play their killer, you know, and now they're playing Survivor, and we're seeing Flame come in here. If you're Trinity right now, what is your mindset coming in here? My mindset coming in here, I need to get down fast. I need to stop those gens from popping. Floods, uh... The Scourge Hook floods of rage. That is going to be very useful if people get unhooking hooking another, uh... Oh my god, excuse me. And others trying to stealth around. Like, if somebody were to get unhooked right now, this killer is gonna know exactly where Claudia is upstairs. Like, I tell you, as an aura lover on this myself, it's <laughs> pretty nice. But. And I wonder how long it's gonna take for survivors to be able to tell if she does have it. Especially in a situation like this. Look, she's getting down, and now she's just looking around to see that how they're not gonna be able to tell if she has it based off of that. Now, if they do get the unhook and she's like, you know, around chasing a survivor that may be hiding, right? Not getting chased, then it might become suspicious. But I feel like it's going to be very hard to detect Blood's Rage, especially since there is no, uh, uh, 
uh, distortion, um, you know, able to be used in the, in the uh, settings, that, you know, in the comp scene. So. Right. That is, it is definitely not a perk that you see on two comps. That's very unexpected, especially with a uh, 4K2 Wincon. I would expect uh, another gender grab, like Fox, Post Weasel. Right. Or like even like you said earlier, like Rancor, but you know, to get that obsession, like that Morgan obsession, you know, whatever, something, even, you know, like No Way Out or anything that was, is just slow down here. This is not a slowdown at all. And neither is agitation. So we're just based off of this. It's just pain res, which is, hey, I mean, you got corrupt intervention too, but they, she was able to get the down very quickly. They just use corrupt intervention just in case if they're not able to get that quick down so that they know what generators were being worked on and what weren't. So, you know, very nice gameplay so far and very interesting decision on the perks. And we're going to see if that pays off here. If we're going to get any floods of rage value, that's like, you know, like very valuable. So. Yeah, we see, um, and we do see two generators with like maybe a third progression, which is, isn't a lot of generator progress. We don't know what the uh, third survivor has on theirs, but the nurse is doing a pretty good job so far of getting hooks in and stopping the generators. Yes, I agree. There we come. Floods of Rage looking oh. around, seeing exactly where survivors are. Wait a second. This is where it's going to come in value. The survivor right here doesn't think that the nurse knows exactly where she's at, but she does. This is where it might get suspicious. Uh, oh, just barely missed that hit on Sunia there. But at least two two people that we saw on generators is uh, this down needs to come in fast. We saw two on Floods of Rage. Yep, we get that. We see that first hit that they definitely needed, and now we finally see the survivors putting up points on the board, and this is good for them. This is exactly what we wanted to see. It took them a little while to do it, but they do have a lot of progression on other generators and. The nurse has already used three stacks of pain res, so, you know, that's a lot of regression right there as well, too. So she has one more to work with, and after that, there is no more slowdown besides she actually gets the generators. Absolutely, and I'm sure survivors here are going to be very on top of stopping the regression from generators once that last pain res stack is used and it's only kicking gens. And we're gonna decide to leave our Claudette and head back over here and give this gen a uh, kick. Just try try and slow it down a little bit. Take 5% off the top. Start it regressing. Unfortunately, the last time that they got the unhook and, and the nurse got Flood's Rage value, that was on Pippa. And she was able to find him, but didn't get that hit off that first chase. Like, she didn't get it off, like, the initial value of it. And it was a little lengthy chase. And unfortunately, Pippa was able to get away, surprisingly, believe it or not. And so, like, yeah, she did get value out of it, but it was a chase that was pointless. And she didn't get to get the down. But, as I'm saying that, I get to eat my own words. Because now Pippa is found injured and we are going to have a down. But still, a lot of time wasted for just this one survivor. You know, this one hook state. But... The survivors do pop another generator. Is this gonna be the four stack of pain res or did she already use it on the um on the survivor? Let's see. Um uh, no, this is her first hook. I her. don't believe that yeah, I believe that's our deliverance player, so I do not believe they've been hooked yet. But yeah, that that as well uh means that a lot of pressure is taking off our survivors here. I mean they need two oh, generators. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's actually very good for the survivors now because on top of that, obviously they she gets her stack of pain res, 25% taken off. But it took her so long to be able to secure that down, and they popped another generator, and now that's the deliverance player, so they can just stick on generators and keep pressure going. And if the nurse doesn't realize that, right, because she wasn't making it obvious, Pippa wasn't. You know, if she doesn't make it obvious here, she didn't make it obvious here, sorry, but now she is unhooked herself, but still, like, the nurse didn't come back to the unhook, and now we're on Nancy, so. Uh, we're gonna see plus get, uh, some good value there. I know exactly where that survivor is, was right outside of the school. And we, is this door open? And we've seen something nah, right here, guys. We've seen a killer get all hooked on each survivor before going for a second hook on another survivor. She has all fresh hooks here. But you don't really see, you usually see the tunnel out, you know what I'm saying? Or like, at least like, you know, them going for another survivor at least more than once. But all four survivors were hooked once each. So she got full value out of, uh, you know, pain res here. We're still with three generators up and we finally see our second hook on the Nancy. Very nice here, but they gotta be careful now that Nancy is on the second hook because if she decides to go for the tunnel out with three gins left, this is gonna be looking good in her favor. She just needs to get a few more hooks here and to be able to win the make this win con happen. That was funny. I honestly didn't even think about that. I realized the fact that it was all four brush hooks. Hey, you almost never see that. Ooh, a good, a good attempt at the double backfire, Nia, but she does go down. 
Yeah, that's exactly what our nurse player needs. There goes it. There goes the last gem. All right, so our survivors need to pop one more generator, and our killer cannot yeah, they, let it, that happen. Knowing me from earlier, saying like they needed a few more hooks, she needs a lot more hooks. I forgot it was a four catch. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that yeah. they got all I don't know why. My head's all over the place. So yeah, all one more gem popped, and they they win the set here. But Trinity's still doing a pretty good performance, but. That's why I was surprised to see the fact that she didn't bring more slowdown to stop these survivors from, you know, being able to get, uh, you know, these gens done. And if she did have pain, I mean, pop, you know, that's a lot of progression on each hook that she's gotten so far that she could have used to stop the survivors from getting these gens popped. But you don't know yet. <laughs> she's still in it, but yeah, I was very surprised not to see pop. And honestly, our survivors might just leave Pippa on this hook to try and pop another generator out. I would not be surprised to see that. And these generators are spread very far apart. The school and the uh, one over by Shaq are very far apart. If they just pressure both of those, this is our nurse. Our nurse looks to be in some trouble. Oh, was nice rage hit. coming in again? Very nice. Was well, raising me a lot of value around the school, which is a very difficult area, and I'm nailing them down. Uh -huh. So Nancy, a death look, I believe she is. Yeah, and oh, yep, there we go. Here's oh. the wing con, and they yeah, do get it. Yep, there you go, barely. That's it's, that's what I'm saying. Like she just got the the first death of the game, you know, and that's the like yeah, she got all stacks of the pain res, but was it if she got a quick tunnel out here? You know, and it could have been a 1v3 a, very, a lot earlier on in the game, and she would have been able to put a lot more pressure on the survivors, but unfortunately wasn't able to. So, th th this isn't going to be a loss for the team, but still, they did a very good job, you know, playing, trying to, you know, come back from that set, but not able to, and Silence is able to win the first set here. Yeah. Out of map so big, having a slowdown. More, having more slowdown would have been helpful with the nurse. They did a very good job of uh, holding, holding our generators until now. We get a nice uh, hit onto our near there, only using one blink, so we do have both blinks available here for the second hit, which is what you want yeah, yeah, to, to see if you're playing nurse. Uh, and I believe this is going to be our second death, so this is going to put us into a 2v1 one generator left. Yeah, uh, no, oh. they are able to pop it fortunately here, so like they will get down. So now we have no gens left, but it's going to be a 2v2, I mean 2v1, so... Killer might be able to get a 4k here, I mean a 3k at least, maybe, but it depends on how they play this here. Are they going to be able to stealth it out the entire time and put this pressure on these exit gates and be able to escape here without losing another person? We'll see. Oh, and you can see both of these exit gates. There's a clear line of sight of both. It takes a few steps and you can see the ball. If it does catch off, I believe the ace going for this door. And the Claudette should hop on the other door right now. Not able to quite catch the Zentagamo. We need to return to our door to see what is going see what's going on there. Yeah, just trying to, you know, uh, patrol him, but Ace is getting on this. I think the nurse is coming back. I'm surprised that I don't see more survivors do the, the strategy where you get the door all the way done before the A and escape to where it doesn't pop up yet. You know, because then like the killer leaves instantly going to the other one and it, you know. But the oh the nurse can see buffing both sides. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, both sides are pretty easy to see. <laughs> She's not gonna have to go very far to see to see both doors. So in this situation, the strategy probably would not work. <laughs> I'm a little bit short to get the hit on the Claudette here. I would be very surprised if we don't get at least one door and one out. Can we see the door open? Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a 3k. And there is? I think it is. Ace escapes. Most likely, yeah. Ooh, nice double backfire, Claudia, if it does not quite make it. Very nice. Very well played. Yes, and guys, like I said, the first set does go to silence here. But hey, we got the second set coming in, which is Claim's pick, and it is gonna be the Demo Gorgon on Rancid Avatar. Let's see how Claim is gonna play. It is gonna be the we're gonna be killing too as well. So they get to go back to back, and you know that momentum could be on their side. And we're gonna see how Silence plays the survivors. They gotta keep it up. They can't let it down, or this could go back in Claim's favor, and we will be going to the tiebreaker, which will be Slinger. And by the way, this is a random announcement, but if any teams in the chat want to play uh, uh, an expedition game that we're gonna be holding, it's at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you guys hear it in stream and you want to participate, 
please go into the Team Sick. I mean, that's Team Sick Discord. Sorry, the S2 Tournament Discord and ping me, and we can get you guys set up with that match. And we appreciate everybody, and don't forget to follow. And we will be back with the second set as soon as it's ready to go. All right, everybody, we are back, and we are sorry about the delay there. We had to take care of some things real fast, but we are back nonetheless with the second set, and this is going to be the first game, and we have Claim killing once again, going against Sur Silence Survivors, and right now we have a great set. One of my favorites is the Demogorgon, and we have a decent map here. Uh, right now, Claim needs to win this set if they want to if they want to go to the tiebreaker. If they do not win the set, unfortunately, they will lose, and Silence will move on, and Claim will not, and they will be eliminated from the tournament. So, we'll have to see. This is do or die for Team Claim. And we already see our first hit coming in here on the Nancy. But a good thing for Darkseid is that he does have Shaq here. And has something to work with in the very beginning. Which is very good because that first hit came in pretty early. So, the survivors are really lucky that they do have Shaq. And we see the two shots coming as normal. We're going to probably try to push Jakal's tree shed over there in the distance. Not too far away. Especially if the Nancy has life. Let's see if she does. Let's spectate her. She does, but already used it on the rush. Unfortunately, she used it on the killer shack, and that does bite her back right here in this very instance. Because if she had to use it here, life, she would have made distance to the tree and would have made that chase last just a little bit more longer. So we're going to be seeing a very quick down and a very quick hook here for the team claim, which is exactly what they need. And as we can see, we do see the Nia getting close up for the onhook, as she does have deliverance. Very good start, but going to have to put more pressure on if they want to win this game. And Dragon, like, glad, glad to have you here. Sorry for talking so much, but I'm excited, you know, I, I love these games. And as we get closer to the, you know, the grand finals and stuff, these games get more intense because these teams, you know, it's do or die, and they've made it so far into these this tournament, you know, they don't want to go home. Absolutely, it's very exciting, <laughs> no worries. Um, we did see that pain res hit the generator that was being doubled. Mm. So, that is a lot of progress lost and time lost. That, that pain was right there. Well, we, do, we, do. So we see a trade here on the hook. Our deliverance player is going to choose to trade with our Nancy. And our killer decides to just hook for the pain run. Get some regression off on the gens. Yep. We know this is the, the deliverance player, so we're just going to leave it and uh, go and try to interrupt something where else we do see our first wow. generator get completed. When, when I switched over to Claudette and the fact that she had that gen ready to be done, that meant that, that another gen had to be very close to being done too because we just got hit with pain res, right? So I expected a 25% to be gone off that generator, but it wasn't. So they already have another generator ready to be popped. But um, I'm, unfortunately, with uh, Pippa being the one that has deliverance, we know that survivors are going to stay on the generators. And Demogorgon probably knows that because she went for the um, the trade there. And I think that the team knew, obviously, that the team was uh, hit there. So that's why they decided to push away and go for other survivors here. So not a bad decision from the Demogorgon. They need to put up more pressure, though. Especially because they might not know that there's another generator ready to pop. They might be trying to hide it from the killer, too, as well. Making it a little bit longer before they realize that, you know, that gen's going to pop. Absolutely. Pretty much about to pop, so they could be trying to uh, to bait the killer into going towards generators that they have less progress by time. Mm. Uh, and so we decided to leave Nancy at, na at main, and we do find uh, Pippa here. It was still hurt. It has Caltry, but let's see what we can do here. Our killing needs a fast down because this is, like, this is do or die for claim. Beautiful shred there. Exactly what they needed. This is do or die here. Uh, they need a good result. If they want to stay in this tournament. Yep, and like I said, it is do or die here. This is the loser's round. They cannot afford to take home a, a, a loss here. Or they will be eliminated and won't be able to play until the next season. And no teams want that this far in. So there's a lot on the line here. And that's what makes these games so exciting. And I get so happy to do these games. As we see another generator popping. Survivors are doing really well keeping that pressure on the Demogorgon. He's not been able to really leave this side of the map at all. They have so much resources on the opposite side of the map. Because of the fact that the Demogorgon has been forced to stay over here by the, sh uh, the, you know, the Killer Shack. I mean the Killer Shack, whatever you want to call that area. As well too. Like, like yeah, they went to Killer Shack. But it's all on that side of the map. 
So Demogorgon's been forced to stay over there. And the survivors have just been playing this as their game. And let's see what the other survivors are doing here. We see Claudette on a gym. And the ace as well too. And we're going to get back to this chase as Dancy. Barely gets the onhook. If he could have gone a little bit quicker, that might not have been able to get the onhook there. And that would have been unfortunate. But depending on how the Demogorgon plays this right here and right now, this might be two downs. And this is not what the team wants. And that crouch tech is insane Ooh. as it allows her to keep going on. And barely misses there. We'll see what Nia's going to do. Oh. Pippa has to do something. She is death hook. Hopefully, that's how we see it down. Does the dark Nancy, Nancy have uh, unbreakable? No, she doesn't. So survivors are going to be in a predicament here. They're going to have to do something as we hear that generator over there getting ready to pop. As we see our first death of the game at uh, two generators. Ron main had a lot of progress on it. And it's part of uh, the only three giant dies here. It does look like we're going to get the pop of weasel, pop post the weasel off on main in time, but barely. We're very, very good for our uh, killer player here. Very and now nice. somebody either needs to come in and pick this up, or this is just going to be another hook. And another pop post the weasel. I don't believe there's anybody around. And we, we still have two more pain res in our pocket. Yep, yep. Alright, Dominic Gorgon is gonna use his add-on here to gain uh, some information on where people are and to try and sneak up. With the uh, with the undetectable, we do manage to get another pop off on that main generator. Okay, no survivors around generators. This is exactly what the Demogorgon wants. He needs to get a quick down here and make the survivors pay for it being a 1v3 situation. If he can't make this chase last long, though, I mean, fast, but make it go way fast, it's not going to be good because they'll be able to get pressure back on the generator. Do we see balance landing? We do, but a shred here could stop that. Let's see. Renato's getting himself to it. No, no, I thought he was going to work with a decent pallet setup here. This is so very nice for the Demogorgon. This is exactly what they needed. They want to get a 4K here with one generator left because that's very good result. And the Nancy, we do have to remember Nancy is death hook, so the Demogorgon knows that. And as we see our first hook on the Renato in a pain stack of, a st as you know, stack of pain res, we only have one left and that is gonna be on the Claudette. But we should be going for the Nancy here to get that second death and make it a 2v1, which would be a GG's here in any situation, as long as the killer picks these chases very, you know, makes them very minimal and decides not to stay on them too long. So we'll see. Absolutely, and our killer has held on to the three gen that has been in this area the entire time. So it's looking, it's looking pretty nice for our killer. He's done a very good job of uh, making this a three v one, holding on to these three generators. The three gen can make a world of a difference. Oh. It looked like that Ivan, I don't have second win there. He must have. He came off the hook uh, broken, but that came, that's not deliverance. <laughs> that, that's a lot of good time for the survivors, too. You don't have to waste any time resetting. In 20 seconds, he's just healed automatically. It does not look like any of these generators have any uh, serious progress in it, but that can change in a heartbeat with survivors like this. Yeah, you're correct. Honestly, this is very decent. Like right now, this is where the game starts to slow down just a little bit from both sides. They got to play careful. It's a 3v1, and the Demogorgon has to play careful because there's one generator left. And he doesn't want to make these chases too long. He needs to pressure the generators. The survivors need to make these chases last longer. And so that the Demogorgon doesn't have a chance to get the generators, you know, the pressure and these fast hooks. So it's, it's, it's both games are playing the same side, just different, you know, objectives. You know, one's trying not to get chased, I mean, down, and the other one trying to get it down. So, right now, um, Cow Tree Shed is still up. Absolutely. And I don't know, win, wins all, all three of those 50 50s. But am I going to vault or am I not? This is very good for him. And our uh, killer is going to leave and check on his main generator. Here the no, and the Demogorgon knows that now. So he's going to have to be worried here. Make sure that yes. he gets it back there. Absolutely, and we see somebody cross to the complete opposite side so that our killer would have to leave all of his generators to go after him. Very smart by our survivor here. Mm. I said it's really slow. They're playing yeah. really slow because they have to. You have to. In this situation, you have to play safely. You have to play slow. If you play too aggressively, you're gonna get tagged, you're gonna get hooked, you're gonna give him, before Pop goes the weasel. 
playing slow and, and carefully in this situation is the, the best option for them. I don't, not in the best spot here. Oh, was that a dead heart? Or did I imagine that? And the last gen does pop. Able to hang on here. Right. That's really nice, too. Oh, oh my goodness. <sighs> now, our demo, I'm going to assume, is going to look for our Claudette here. With, with, with nobody escapes death because our Claudette is worth the most amount of uh, hook stages. Our Claudette has not been hooked in. We do indeed find the Claudette. Uh, the question is, do they need to look for Noed? Do they find it in time? You do see Noed on uh, Demogorgon says a lot so that they have something good for end game. Yep. Especially because, like I said, Demogorgon can go either way. He can put a lot of pressure on the survivors and, you know, not even need Noed. But then there's games like this where he does need Noed in the back pocket. So, they, you know what I'm saying? It's a 50 50 here. And right now, they definitely need it. And he's going to be able to catch up with all that here. Yeah. And the survivors know. And this is the fresh hook. This is exactly the hook that they needed. So are they? They're gonna um, probably leave. If I'm them, I'm leaving. Yeah, their best bet is probably to get out. I believe they have a door 99 with uh, where Renato is. And no, and nobody's on the uh, no, which means nobody has found it. It's very, very risky to stay around and to risk more hook states against the one escapes dead. And we see the door open, we will probably see both survivors leave. And our devil was very smart here in using his add-on to uh, find the auras of the survivors left so that he could find the Claudette and get the uh, most hook stages that he could possibly get here, find our fresh hook. Very, very good usage of that add-on. Yep, it's Day. They don't want to risk it anymore. They couldn't find Noed, so there was no reason for them to stick around. And it's going to be a decent result here. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be easier, a little bit easier for their killers to be able to come back and do something here. So, guys, we will be back with the next set, and we appreciate everybody that is here so far. And if you guys have not already, you already know what I'm going to say. Make sure you guys follow the stream and hit exclamation point YT as every game that we do cast here on Twitch is uploaded to our YouTube channel, and it means a lot, and it helps us be able to cast bigger games in the future. Alrighty, everybody, we are back with the second game of the second set with Claim versus Silence here. And now, it's going to be a very interesting, uh, you know, play for the uh, both teams. As we know that right here, it could be do or die. And the win con is kind of, you know, it's not hard. It's not impossible. Last game we saw, we had, on the last game with, uh, you know, um, Claim killing, we saw Claudette get killed. That was be three stages on Claudette, three stages on Nia, two on Nancy, and one on Renato. So they're going to have to put a lot of pressure and do something amazing amazing here and we see the four slowdowns on the win con on this game here the demogorgon knows that he's gonna have to put a lot of pressure up and the dragon you know it's the last game it could be it could be the last game so what are you thinking right now and i i need i need this renato <laughs> i need this renato but yeah i noticed immediately too that we added uh we have eruption this time instead of no one escapes death uh, we, we need we, we really want to stop uh, all of these generators from popping if we can manage to hold on to even just one with everybody dead then we win this set Yeah, we will we find the Aiden Find the Aiden mate. We haven't gotten a hit yet which You really want an early one, but we are gonna put eruption down onto the main generator So that when we do get it down that is going to explode all right, I mean, we're starting we're not off to a great start yet. The Demogorgon hasn't been able to secure a hit yet. Survivors have done a really good job of stopping that from happening. Stick it on the generators. We did see that teleport there on the Ada. But right now, the Demogorgon needs to get something rolling. Yes, he is getting uh, eruption on the generators. But Corrupt is about to be down and still hasn't secured that first hit yet. And this Ada is here. Taking all the way away from where the gems are being progressed, which is very nice to the Corrupted side. Yes, the Corruption is going to go down, but still... There's no progression whatsoever on those generators, and this is exactly where Ada wants to be, and not where the Demogorgon wants to be. Very nice gameplay so far. 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah the, our Demogorgon is taking chase away from every single generator that is being worked on right now. The aid is doing a very good job of bringing him over there. You need to pass down here. And there are a lot of resources that she had to use. But if you see the first generator pop, I would not be surprised if we could see a second generator pop in a few seconds here. Oh, there we go. That's exactly what we wanted to see. We finally see eruption coming up, hitting those generators, getting some regression as well. And, you know, a first down, which is very good here on the Ada. You know, Demogorgon needs to get more pressure as one generator has already popped and they just finally got their first down. So pressure's on. They need to do something, but they do have a lot of slowdown, so they're able to stop these generators from regret progressing too, too much. You see the ace there already have a gen over halfway, and a fast onhook here. Wow. That was really fast. That could be a um, not good idea here, unless she has uh, the high step, which she does, so that makes perfect oh. sense why they did with that. Oh, that, that is not the situation you want to be in. If you are a Demogorgon right now, you, you need hooks, you need them fast, you need to be able to uh, apply pop on these generators. You do not want to get hit with the DS right now. Uh, we are going to take a side trip over to the generators real fast and see if we can stop them from being popped. We have very, very high progression on these gens. Yep, very nice. Survivors know exactly what they have to do to win this con, this game. And so the pressure is on the killer, not the survivors. So they're able to play a little bit more freely, but still not safe and comfortably because any, oh, that is unfortunate Ooh. for the Demogorgon. Hit the hay bale there, very upset and decided not even to break that. So that pallet can come back to haunt him later on in the game. Absolutely, and that shack bell is the guard pallet. Oh, who put those hay barrels there? <laughs> uh. Okay, we do see our second generator pop here. Ada, Ada's doing a really good job of uh, buying as much time for her as possible. As far away from the generators as possible, we do see her go down. And we see another generator popping. This is not looking good at all. Yeah, this is going to be very, very difficult to come back from for our Kelly here. But we never count anything out. Nope, ever. Sorry, yeah, like I was like the score. Still looking... <laughs> okay. <laughs> it looks like our killer is still looking for the uh, the tunnel out. But it does give our survivors a lot of time to work on generators on uh, what was originally the corrupt side of the map. Yeah, so we'll see here. Like I said, we saw Silence winning the first set. And we claim needs to come back here and win it. And right now, they are up on the set so far. So it's still not over. I think that's the claim does win the set. I've been mistaken this whole entire time, guys. I'm over here casting so much and talking so much and, you know, messing around with chat that I'm not actually paying attention to what's, like, the set and score. So my bad, I apologize. But hey, we're all having fun here. So that's all that matters. As we see another generator pop, only one left. The survivors are doing a really good job, too, of keeping these generators going and not stopping the momentum here. They really are. And we're going to see uh, another pain rest come in here. So whatever generator had the most progress just lost a bunch of it. Our gens are pretty spread out. Uh, unfortunately, Demo can put portals down, so it, its mobility is not as uh, as bad. Yep, and okay. you're not able to see those teleporters too until he uh, teleports through them, which is a plus in certain situations because they can't harass your teleportations if uh, you don't go through them for at least one time. Absolutely. Now we're gonna have to go in uh, check on these generators. Hey, this time the hay bale does not affect the Demogorgon. <laughs> we're gonna put a portal down right next to uh, our generator there. And head back over to the other side of the map to see what's going on over there. We actually, you know what, I just noticed we do not have the add-on for our aura reading this time. I think that might be the first demo set that, uh, that I haven't seen it on. Honestly. Oh, that gen. They got caught. Is that? Oh, that's Ace here. Almost got the, oh, no, no, okay, Kenny's been hooked twice, and, uh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, Ada there is our only death hook. Ace would be another paid res. We have yeah, them doubling up on Shaq. He is indeed injured, which, which is great for our killer. Uh, we find the question instead. Almost gets the shred. Almost does, but almost is quite not enough yet, as we know in these games here. Quentin doing a good job trying yeah. to stay alive. 
but the Demogorgon is catching oh. up. And we're gonna see the body block come in here from Ace, and they are doubling Shaq. Very, very fast. And uh, they're gonna be in some trouble. We will see that generator pop. It needs eruption right now. All right. Hey, it looks like we might be. Yeah, we are going to be going into a five set as Clean wins the second set here. Very dominating performance. You know, I thought that they were going to show some, you know, uh, some resilience here and show some fight back and not letting Silence claim the second set. So we will be going in to our third set. We love tiebreaker sets. And do you want to guess, Dragon, what the third set is going to be? Slinger. Yes, <laughs> you know I slinger. love Slinger sets. You yep. know I love Slinger sets. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Claim did a really, really good job of showing up here mm -hmm. and making sure that they get their chance to go into the tiebreaker and get their chance to stay in this tournament. And everybody's going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here. Now, guys, we are going to be getting set up. This is... This tiebreaker is going to be very dangerous as it is do or die. Both teams fighting for their lives here to be able to try to secure this win and stay in the tournament. And, guys, if you haven't already, make sure you guys follow the stream. And if any team wants to participate in an open expedition game that we're going to be hosting tonight at 11 p.m., we have one team that's available to play. Uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you guys can, go in the Discord and ping me, uh, sick, and we will get you guys set up in those matches. Get the picks and bands going. We do appreciate everybody, and we'll be back with the next set as it is a tiebreaker as we're going into the final sudden death. As we are back in with our tiebreaker set of uh, Death Slinger with uh, Silence Killing and Claim Surviving. Now, this map always, always, always has a really good 3 or 4 gen on both sides of the map. So, usually, you're going to want to uh, hold one side of the map. We see our killer with a uh, pain rest pop, Agi, to get to those scorch hooks in case they're in bad places. And, of course, corrupt intervention. And we're looking to find, try and sniff out our first survivor. Looking edge map to find somebody trying to stealth around. We don't quite see anybody yet. Uh, I wonder, I wonder if there has to be at least one or two uh, uh, survivors who have crossed already and it seems like our killer is thinking the same thing and is going to go check the generators. Ah, uh, we hear that generator being worked on. Let's see, who can we find here? Oh, our survivor did a very good job of pre-leaving that generator. Our killer is going to need to find a survivor soon and get a first hit in. They're getting a decent amount of progress on the generators, and as we all know, a first hit and a first down means everything. We do find scratch marks here leading around the main building. Our slingers decided he doesn't want to deal with main building right now and finds our Renato in a more open area. Unfortunately, does miss the first shot and is going to return back to this side. He was hoping to get a quick injury onto a Renato, which does not quite make it. Now we go and check this uh, generator over here. We see Scratch Marks again leading to the main building. Barely misses that shot. Very nice dodge by our Ada. This main building can be can be tough for the killer. This main building can be pretty tough. Although since this is a ranged killer, it's a little bit easier on Slinger than some other killers. We're having a lot of trouble finding our first hit here. Ooh, what a beautiful uh, snipe onto our Ada, and we're going to use the cigar add-on to make our recovery from her break the chain a lot shorter. Oh, and manages to get the follow-up hit at like almost max range. That was absolutely beautiful. Amazing job by our Death Slinger here. We're going to see our first hook. It's going to be a very nice down, um, you know, very good start for the Death Slinger. Getting that first hook off before the first generator pops is always a good feeling as a killer. You know what I'm saying? It gives you that satisfaction that at least you're not getting three gens popped. We see that quite ha happen often, you know, sometimes, some, sometimes with killers in certain sets. Even here with the Death Slinger, we've seen him quite a few times where he's not able to get the game starting in his favor. And they get a few generators popping. So now that he does get it, he has the confidence on his side. Um... It was a little bit lengthy, but does have pop, you know, goes the weasel and pain res. Renato getting caught out here, trying to go for the flashlight blind, which is kind of questionable. Doesn't really make sense, especially because now that gets uh, Killer a free, uh, you know, tag. And now he doesn't really have anywhere to work with. So we'll see how they continue to go here. 
Now Renato is pretty zoned over here. All he really had was that pallet. Not sure it was up with the flashlight, but you know, leaves the wrong. We do get the unhook on the other side of the map for free. Almost gets that shot as well. I believe it was a little bit out of range there. We're gonna bother these people on the generators. Catch the shot on the Quentin. And guess the injury there. What beautiful shots these are. And he does manage to stop this generator from popping and doing so. Ooh, gets hit with blast mine. No, it's just five seconds stun and then Renato gets picked up. That's gotta hurt. Okay. Oh, and we're looking around. <laughs> All right, oh, but yeah, yeah, I realized we were gone again. And so we're looking around for our survivors again. Where did, it, where did, oh, where did I quit? Not seeming to find anybody. Um, the survivors honestly might be resetting right now. They might be resetting Renato. We do find the Quentin again. And yeah, and you see the heel come off on Renato. We need, we need this down onto this Quentin right now. And we are... Our slender two has to break the chain instead of going for the uh, hit there. And we see a generator pop in. That's our first generator. That actually took a little bit longer than what I thought it would be for the first generator to pop. But we probably means that we're going to see a lot of progression. All minus 10 on top of pain res getting stacked on top of that. All right, give me one moment. I will be right back, okay? <laughs> All right, no problem. Yeah, that minus 10 for free is going to mean a lot. That generator was we saw before was highly, highly progressed. Uh, I would bet, honestly, that it was almost finished when it got hit with pain res. And we are going to... We catch the Renato out again. Oh, the Renato is smart there and started to run towards the middle. He's on there. Just out of range for that hit. Oh, and our, our survivors are gonna try and take our killer to the other side of the map, but but that's not that's not gonna work. Like I said there's always a good three or four gen on both sides of these maps. We hear the Quentin crying around the corner there. And it looks like our the slinger is going to go for the tunnel out here. We got Ada coming in with the body block, which is not always easy with a death slinger because he can shoot around you. He does get free of the chain, but if that survivor has had dead hard, it's useless now. I do not believe he does though. And we see that those two generators are really close to being popped, so I kind of feel bad for the death slinger because right now we went from being four generators and it's about to be two generators now. So the the momentum on his side is about to change with only two hook states here. Silence needs to do something. This claim right now is starting to take over on this side of the set. Two hook states is not good. And like I said, especially with them coming in, you know, um, claim coming in as killers, we're probably going to see a setup that's going to be based around that win con. So we'll see how the survivors keep playing. They got to do something here, though. I mean, the killer, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and we choose not to go for the basement hook. We're going to take a question into the middle of the map. Okay, it seems our killer, our killer knew that he was probably going to lose some of the generators in the back there. He saw how highly progressed they are. Uh, and is going to be looking to get somebody out of the game and get some more stages here. Yeah, I know the pressure is on both teams right now to perform at their best because they do not want to be eliminated. Um, so, yeah, I'm just honestly... He's very excited to see how this, this the rest of this matchup and the next one's going to be played. Yeah, this is a bit of a tough decision or a spot to be in for our killer here. His gens are, are a bit spread. So you have to you have to try and stop this person from getting unhooked and also not lose the generators that are nearby each other. We do spot Ada, I believe that was. And chase her off. He wants this kill. He needs he needs this kill. Uh, survivors might come in and try and double save or just trade if they can. Oh yeah, we see everybody there. They want to go for the save. Oh, nice for the people. Ooh. Very smart by our survivors. That is going to cost a lot of time on this tunnel out. And then since all the survivors are right there, this pickup off the ground should come in uh, pretty fast. Oh, and we get the, we see the fourth generator pop. Ooh. All right, my bad guys. I'm officially back. We had, I had to take care of some back end stuff for our next game. We're not even gonna end this stream. As this, this is done, we're gonna go in straight into the next one. So, I mean, it's gonna be a long stream here. 
and we're gonna be seeing our first expedition match which i'm actually really excited for it's not gonna be the same as a tournament you know it's not gonna have the same like you know uh like the same like uh what do you i'd say like the same uh game set like you know teams are playing and practicing against each other so you know you might see a little bit of different game style and stuff like that but it's still nonetheless gonna be very fun we're having two new teams that have not yet played for s2 tournaments which is always exciting and as we see, we got the uh, Quentin over here getting, probably getting ready to get set up for the onhook. All the other survivors are pressuring that last generator. As we can see here, the cleansing totems thinking that maybe they have uh, no ed or something that has to be, or unless he had inner strength, um, which he did, okay. That Quentin needs to, needs to be really careful though, because that Quentin is a death hook. Ooh, and that would not be oh. good. Although with one generator left and the ones that they were working on the other side of the map, we might be going for a lot of stages here, but this will this will see our Quentin out of the game. Very nice. This is exactly what the Death Slinger needed, but unfortunately, and the set that they're like, at the time that we're on, right? Um, like it's death. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a death hook, which is good. But we have one generator left. That killer was probably hoping to get that a little bit faster. And and as you can see, the spamming of the gun, they kind of know that they're getting ready to get the last gen pop. And as I said it, if the caster's curse happens and we see the last generator popping yeah. for the, the survivors here, um, we'll see how it goes on. Seriously, this is very interesting. One, two, three, you got five hook states and one death. Not the worst, but not the best either. So we'll see how the killers respond. When you get to make a setup based off of the wing con, it makes it a little bit easier because you can bring Noed, you can bring Rancor. So, yeah. For sure, getting the wing con is very helpful, and and this killer does not have Noed for the end game, which can absolutely clutch a kill, maybe even two. We are in chase with Ada here. It was right towards the door. Doesn't quite make it there. It's a really, really nice shot off on the Ada and gets it down there. I would guess that they're probably on the other door, but we're gonna go check it real fast. And then I guess they're probably gonna take the two out, but we'll see. Yeah, it is gonna be a two out here. So guys, everybody that's in the stream right now that is wondering what the set is, we're in the tiebreaker set. This is do or die. It is elimination. And both teams have been fighting it out this entire battle here. And right now, the win con is, it, the score is going to be 17 to 20 in claims favor. They were, under, they were, I mean, they were underdogs coming in this set because they, how they love, like, the momentum in the first one. But they're, they're doing really well. So if Silence wants to win, they're going to have to do a better set. We see three hooks on Quentin, one, I mean, uh, three on Ada, one on Ace. So they're going to have to do better than that. So a total of six. There's going to be a total of se uh, seven hook states. Seven. Yep. So if they can do better than seven hook states, we will, it will be a, a dub for them and they will continue on and keep fighting for their, uh, you know, for the rights to stay in this tournament. And we do appreciate everybody as we're getting to get set up for the last game of this uh, tiebreaker set. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the final game of the tiebreaker set. And right now, the final scores between both teams is 95 to 96. If that tells you how close it is, it is do or die at this point. We have Trinity killing for her team, and it's going to be very exciting to see how they're going to come. Obviously, you know, with this setup here, you know, Team Claim is going to have to do something nice here to be able to win this set and keep Silence from, you know, winning the the, the whole time and winning the entire sets. So I'm excited to see how Claim is going to do this against Silence's survivors. Dragon, in this situation with all the pressure, you know, it's your favorite set. What are you what are you thinking right now? What do you what are you expecting to happen between the teams? Uh, I mean this is gonna be a fight, as you said, it's only one point off. That is the tiniest margin it could possibly be. And we find a very early hit this time, which is very different from uh our, la our last set. So that's very good for our killer here, but we do choose to leave the Renato to look for somebody else. Which I find interesting. Yeah, especially because they got the hit, the hit on very quickly. Right. You expect them to stay on that Renato and, and um, you know, put the pressure on. But I guess maybe they were thinking to themselves that they're going to probably go for the reset, you know, and that's going to be times off the generator. Or if they don't go for the reset, they'll catch him later. And Renato gets healed pretty quickly here, so it really didn't... They guess they were off a of gen, so it is a plus, but we'll see how this goes. It's one point difference at this very moment, so it's either it could be do or die. It, or it could go down to a tiebreaker, too, again. <laughs> They could, they could very easily, absolutely. Uh, we just need no way out on our killer this time because to slow down the survivors escaping because this end game is gonna, if this comes to end game, it's gonna matter a lot and we get another tag onto the Renato. Yep, and we see our first down. 
And we have, like you said, a tag on Renato, which is actually really good. He has to mend himself in waste a little bit of time, too. We see our first hit coming in. No generators have popped yet, which is really good for the killer. This is exactly the start that they want. And now, if that's not mistaken, that is the Nia. No, the Claudette. Sorry, I was updating the score. I couldn't see well. So we know Renato's over somewhere getting his men status done. So he can get on a generator or maybe getting the reset. We can check real quick. No, nope. They're both on gens. So we're going to see Cla uh, Claudette 100% yeah, okay. go for a switch. Yeah, we had heard the Renato by the hook, actually. I, I heard him when the uh, Deathslinger was going after the Claudette because he's hurt. So I'm surprised he didn't turn to him. Um, I wonder what we don't want the Renato. But we do get a uh, trade off there, and Claudette, I would assume, is our deliverance player. And we can double check right here, and it is the deliverance yeah. player. Very nice. First, uh, second hook for the killer. My bad. And we still have two survivors that are injured and one on the hook. The pressure is starting to stack up a little bit, but not too much to where the survivors have to worry too much. But, you know, they got to be careful here, or it could change quickly. Ooh, we don't quite get that shot. Ah, uh, that is the Renato. We did see the person who was on hook. The ace is our DS player, but that is not going to come to play at this point in time. Ah, uh, he's a bit zoned here, though. Yeah, no, he, Renato doesn't have much of anything to work with here. It looks, does, is he our balance any clear a shot from uh, our slinger? Ah! Ah! We have two stacks and no way out so far. This will be our third, and presumably our third pain run. It's doing very good job stopping these gens from popping so far. And a third fresh, our uh, third fresh hook. Very nice here. Getting that, oh, and we're getting those stacks of no way out too as well, and those stacks of pain res. Very nice. You know, this could be great for the killer moving on. Three fresh hooks, but needs to start working on getting that tunnel out. They haven't got a generator done yet, which is very surprising. But, you know, three stacks of pain res being used, it does stop this generators. But one more stack. And he will not have no more slowdown besides the fact of no way out in the end game. So we'll see how they continue here. Exactly. Once he uses all four of those stacks of uh, pain res here, our killer does not have any more regression. It looks like we are going to be trying to secure our and check on these generators around main. They're going to harass the generators and uh, the unhook at the same time. He's coming in, we get a tag off of him. This should be a trade. Oh, auto aim. The eye frames there. Messed up our killer. Can we get Renato for the hit? We do. Renato does not quite manage to take the hit. Now Renato's in a, in a lot of trouble here. If our slinger gets his shot here, Renato's gonna go immediately back down. He does indeed go right back down. But our killer chooses not to pick him. I'm possibly worried about the S. And we're gonna take our hook over to our slug. Now, where did our slug go? <laughs> it's crawled off somewhere. Oh, we do, uh... We have three generators left at this point. Somebody on the ground, another person hurt. They need to reset here, especially against Slinger. Yeah, we see a death. We see somebody on, like, on their second hook here. And then we see another one downed somewhere in the distance as well, too. Sorry, like, I've been just doing some things in the background again. But, um, and another one injured, but we have one healthy working on a generator, so we'll see a, another gen pop, hopefully for them, and then a pickup, which isn't gonna be the worst, they're gonna, if I'm the team, I'm gonna get the reset, and get healed up, right, and, and before, uh, the Pippa dies, oh, Nia coming in for the unhook, was not expecting to see that. Yeah. yeah, the Nia had been working on a generator nearby, uh, the Claudette went for the, uh, pickup, and they're both injured, so we wanted to get, Ooh, we wanted to get the trade before... Ace died, but he's going to go right back down again with a good shot from our slinger. But we do see the third generator pop in the background. Ooh. Ooh, nice. We see that flashlight. I, that I mean, the fire firecracker uh, <laughs> blind. We hear the Neo over here. Oh. 
We do find uh, the Nia who, who crawled off, and sh this should be her second one? I believe so. We have more than one survivor on Death Hook now. It is still her in a DS. Her in our. Oh no, it's her first egg. My bad, my bad. I can't tell people apart, apparently. But now we have four stacks of No Way Out. He did not use her pain rise, so he does still have that in his back pocket. Uh, we do have multiple death of survivors, a lot of injuries. And we're holding on to our gens on the back here. This is not a bad position for our, our slinger here. We nope. do see the reset come off. Because you know those survivors probably uh, across to the other side to reset because this is the safest place that they could have done it and they are all now crossing back over to the side where we have our hook and all, pretty much all of our generators or at least the ones that are going to be the easiest to protect. See a free throw on a pallet there. <laughs> And Cloda is going to go for the trade. Our swinger is just going to take the hook. We let the Nia go for now. We're just going to take the hook and bring it farther into his gen setup here. The agitation makes that a lot easier. All right, it's running by. Sorry, I'm still getting stuff set up in the background. <laughs> I was okay. I'm like 50 50 on whether you're here or not. I'm like, do no, I just I'll keep talk. talking? Trust I'll me, just I'll keep talk. talking. Yep. <laughs> no, no worries. All right, we catch the Renata out at the edge of the map. He has the super OPZ wall <laughs> right here. Uh, but that's a very good slide for our slinger to catch the Renato out. And he should get an M1 here and he'll be able to follow up hopefully with a shot. But does see um, the Ace trying to cross over to get the unhook, so chooses to shoot at him instead of following up with the uh, Renato, try and stop this unhook. He wants somebody out. He wants somebody dead. He wants to make this into a 3v1 and two generators that is ideal for our slinger right now. And with people injured, you can't <laughs> you can't really save against the slinger with uh, somebody injured. He goes for the shot again. Almost makes it, but not quite. He's going to try and delay and stall the battle from getting the hook. Can he do it? Oh, he does. He delays the Renato just enough time that he cannot unhook. And we see our first death here. Uh, but we do see another generator pop. That was very, very well played by our slinger there. It was perfectly timed. We did lose a generator. But having a death uh, with one left and then these generators relatively close by is going to be very good for our killer here. We're looking around see if we can find where the other survivors went. There is some progress on this generator. And we find the ace again. The ace is... Oh, sorry, that was the Nia. <laughs> and the Nia's going to try and take our slinger to the other side of the map, but our slinger knows better than to leave his generators behind. And that would be second wind on the Ronaldo there, so he will be fully healed in 20 seconds unless the slinger can grab him first. Oh, very nice job. Oh, almost. Oh, that hurts. That hurts a little bit. That hurts to see. He almost had the down before the Renato got fully healed. But this hill gen is very dangerous. It's very unsafe. And it's their generator with the most progress. Oh, they do still have a pallet to the left. But other than that, if you get caught out there in a bad spot, especially once that pallet gets thrown. A very good dodge by our ace there. They are slowly but surely pressuring these generators in the back here. Playing a little hide and seek. There we go. Oh! oh what is that miss? Great job by our ace there. Did we got a free 10% off the generator. Yeah, these generators are getting pretty close. I'm sure the one on the hill, there's somebody over there poking at it. All right, now we're gonna use the trees to break the chain to u make use of our cigar out on so we get a uh, stun on hit. 
I'm actually choosing to chase the Neo away from the generators. Uh, our slinger probably knows that he's gonna lose one of them soon. So we're gonna go for the hook. And I've been doing a bad job of counting who's death hook or not, but I believe. Oh no, the Neo was our last ping, as that's right. What a, what a smart move by our slinger there to hold on to that pain res until towards the end of the match here. That's gonna buy some time. That's gonna buy some very, very valuable time. We're looking around to see if somebody's trying to sneak through here. We see, you see scratch marks I'm running to the other side of the map. And the last generator does indeed pop, but we have one on the hook and somebody in chase away from the door not 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 ideal for our survivors our slinger needs to make sure that this is a death and grab somebody else before they manage to escape Looks like there is no door over here, though, where the Renato is. And unless the uh, ace is there right now, we're gonna see a death on the Nia as well. Our Nia does die. No way else just got procced. Which means these survivors are in a bad spot. That is the full 60 seconds that you cannot open the doors because we have four stacks of no way out and we are on a survivor on the other side of the map. <laughs> We're gonna force the uh, pull out of the locker so we cannot slug. <laughs> okay, let's just have a moment. Have a moment with our uh, Rolando in the locker. Well, I mean, that he was, was a like, great excuse game. you, you need to mend. That was a great <laughs> you need game to mend. And, hey, that was a great game. And everybody gets props for yeah. Dragon doing a lot of solo uh, casting by herself right now while I'm in the background getting set up for an ex expedition game. So everybody that's here, this since this game is over, it is not yet done. We are getting set up for our expedition uh, game right now. Um, we were a little bit behind. It's been really busy today. I was casting for uh, another league, uh, getting other things set up. But um, we have an amazing uh, ref in the background, Omega, helping us out, doing a really good job of getting the you know the uh, build set up and all that. And I do appreciate you. But unfortunately for this game right here at this very moment, the team that is going to be moving on and going to be winning this entire set is going to be claimed. They did an amazing job. It was neck and neck, 95 to 96 when we came into this very match right here that you were watching. But they were able to take the victory home. It's going to be 122 to 110. And GG's to both teams as we continue on in this $500 tournament. And we will be back.